Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Hello everyone, my name is Umar Khan and the topic of our today's video is linear regression. In this video we will see that what exactly linear regression is and how we can use it to solve a very interesting problem where we predict the prices of house based on some features of the house. So, linear regression is basically a type of supervised learning which is built on labeled data which is fed to our algorithm for training. In easier words, supervised learning involves labeled data. Linear regression is basically used for regression problems. That is, it is used for solving the problems where we have continuous valued output. So for example, we have a problem where we want to predict the prices of different houses. For example, we have a data set like this, where we have sizes of different houses and their prices. We can also visualize this data in a 2D plot. Here you can see that each cross represents a data or a row of this data set. Now, the goal of linear regression is to find a linear function that maps our inputs to the outputs. That is, we want to find a function to which if we feed our input, that is, if we feed to that function the size of a house, then that function would return us the price of the house. So, if we were to create a flowchart of linear regression, it would be something, something like this. First of all, we feed the training data to our learning algorithm. As you can see, this is our training data and we feed it to our linear regression algorithm. And what our algorithm does is that it finds a linear function which is represented by a H here. And the goal of this function is to map the input to the outputs. That is, it maps the features of the training data to the output of the training data. All of this process is, name, is named as the training of our model. Now once we have trained our model and find the best hypothesis or the best linear function that maps our training data's input to its output, then we, then we can use this hypothesis for predictions. That is, if we want to predict the price of a house whose size is not in our training data, we simply feed the size of that house to our hypothesis and then our hypothesis will return an estimated price or a predicted price for that input. Now let us move forward and see some of the notations that are used in linear regression. The first notation that we are going to see is M. M corresponds to the number of training examples in our training data set. And X's are the input features. So X might be the size of the house or the number of the bedrooms of the house. Then we have Y, which is the output, which is, in our case, the price of the house. Now, if we write X, Y, then this represents one training example from our training data set. Similarly, if we write X superscript I, Y superscript I, then this corresponds to the ith training example. So, for example, if we had X1, Y1, then that would represent the first training example of our training data set. Now, as we have already discussed that the objective of linear regression is to find a, a linear function that maps inputs to the outputs. Now, to find that linear function, we are going to look at the general form of that function. The general expression or the equation for that function in mathematics is given by y equals to mx plus c where m is the slope of the function and c is the y-intercept. While dealing with linear regression, this, is, this linear function is named as the hypothesis and is given by h theta of x equals to theta 0 plus theta 1 multiplied by x. These two equations are basically the same provided only the symbols are changed. Now y here is equal to h theta of x. And theta1x corresponds to, 
corresponds to the term mx. So theta1 is basically the slope of our linear function or of our hypothesis and h theta of x is the output. Similarly theta0 is the y-intercept. Here theta is also sometimes named as weights or the parameters of our model. Now, as you would remember, the task of linear regression is to find the best fit line or we might say the best hypothesis that maps our inputs to the outputs, that is the one that gives minimum loss. So for example, we have a 2D plot of our input, of our input features on the x-axis and output on the y-axis. Now the small circles represent the data points in our training sample. Now using linear regression, our goal is to find a linear function or a hypothesis or a straight line that maps these inputs correctly and most accurately to the outputs. And the line or the hypothesis that gives the best prediction, that is, the one that maps our inputs accurately to the outputs is the one that gives the minimum loss. Now for example, our algorithm predicted a line something like that. Now this line would give a very big amount of loss. Why? Because for each of the input, it is not being able to correctly predict the output. So, if we were dealing with visualization, we would define linear regression as an algorithm which finds the best fit line through our training data. And mathematically, it finds the perfect linear function that maps our inputs to the respective outputs. And how does linear regression do that? It, it completes this task by minimizing the loss. So let's see in detail what this loss is and how can we minimize it so as, we, so as to find the perfect fit for our training data. So as we can enable our linear regression to find the best fit line or the best hypothesis. Now loss, which is also named as cost function, is basically the difference between the predicted and the actual output. So for example, we predicted a price of $500 while the actual price for the house was of $300. Then the difference between the two would be $200 which represents the loss or the cost of our prediction. And it is given by H minus Y, where H is the value we predicted and Y is the actual output of the training data. This loss is given by the sum of squared difference loss function and is mathematically written as follows. So we basically square the difference between our prediction and the actual output and sum it for all the training examples. That is, we start from the first training example and we go towards the last training example and then we divide it by 2m. And as we have discussed, the goal of linear regression is to find the best fit line or find the line that gives the minimum loss. So now we want to minimize this loss. And how do we minimize this? We minimize this with the help of an algorithm which is, which is named as gradient descent. Now, the point about minimizing the loss we are going to understand this with the help of a certain visualization in which we plot loss against our parameters. Now we know that if we change the parameters of our model or of our hypothesis then the loss will change because different parameters will result in different lines and those different lines will have a different loss with respect to our training data. So what we have done here is we have plotted our parameter theta1 against the loss. So for example, we started our algorithm and at the very beginning, the value of theta1 was somewhere around here. And that gives us, that, then that gave us a value of loss somewhere around here, which you can see is a very high value of loss and we want to minimize this value. And how we minimize this cost, we basically update the value of our parameter. So we go in this direction and we change the value of theta1 from here to here and then again we compute the loss and then we find the loss to be somewhere around here. Now we can see that the loss has certainly decreased but still this is not the optimum value of loss that is this is still not the minimum value of loss. So we decrease our theta1 
further and still decrease it further till we reach the minimum point in our curve that is we find the optimum value of theta 1 which gives us the minimum value of our loss and just like we have discussed this scenario we could have started from a value of theta 1 somewhere around here in that case we would have to update the value of theta 1 in this direction that is from a value of theta 1 around somewhere here we would have to go in this direction and update the value of theta 1 around somewhere here and then again update it in this direction and then again update it until we find the optimum value of theta 1 which gives us the minimum loss so how do we minimize the loss we minimize the loss by finding the optimal value of our parameters so we change our parameters to, to reach the minimum loss and we update the parameters using an algorithm which is named as gradient descent and it is given by the following mathematical equation here thetas are the parameters now the value of parameters are updated by subtracting this term from the old value of theta in this term you can see we are taking the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to theta and we are multiplying it with a constant alpha this alpha is named as the learning rate and this learning rate simply describes the size of the step we take to update our parameter so for example we could have updated the value of theta 1 from here to here or in the case that we previously discussed we could have it updated from here to this point so in the later one we have taken a bigger step while in the first one we took a very small step to update the parameter now how big a size we or how big a step we take to update our parameters is determined by alpha the bigger the value of alpha the bigger the step we are taking and vice versa and all of the updating of parameters that we discussed here that we go from a certain value of theta towards the optimal value of theta is managed by this algorithm that is gradient descent here the last thing that we are going to discuss is the partial derivative of the cost function which is given by simply this equation here we take the difference of our predicted value and the actual value and we multiply it with the input and we take a summation over all the training examples and divide by m so this is basically the derivative of the cost function that we computed before now that we have seen that how can we minimize the loss using gradient descent let us summarize the whole of the linear regression algorithm so in linear regression algorithm we start by randomly initializing the parameters and get a random model now for that model we would have some value of loss so we find that loss then we update our parameters until convergence which simply means that we keep on updating our parameters until we have found the optimum value of loss and we do that in order to minimize the loss and thus find the best model or function that maps inputs to outputs so for example we have some data points that are plotted in this figure with red crosses and the first randomly initialized model or the line that we get that we got was this blue line and here you can see that this blue line is not a very good fit for our model so what we do is we update our parameters using gradient descent and then we get a new line for the new updated parameters and we keep on updating the parameters till we find the best line that fits our model or uh, I actually need a correction here uh, we basically want the best line that fits our training data the best not our model the line is itself the model that we are building so we want a line that is the best fit for our training data and here you can see that we started from this randomly initialized line which was a very bad fit for our training data and after updating our parameters with the help of gradient descent we reached a line which is a very good approximation for our training data now once we have find the hypothesis for this line we can use that hypothesis for future predictions
So in this video we basically saw what linear regression is and what is the magic behind it that is what is all the maths and all the logics behind it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.